But now that the alpha is over, I want to give my thoughts on what I liked and what I didn't like about the game, what I like to see added, and what I like to see changed. While doing this, in the background, I have footage of me punishing Taz's tornado attack, a move a lot of players seem to struggle with. While this may not be the optimal way to punish it with your character, it might help you get an idea of what to do. The first thing is, in my opinion, this game is offensive oriented. With no block or shield, the game is focused on attacking, dodging, and punishing. And if you see how I play fighters, blocking is something I'm very bad at, and I love being aggressive, so this is right up my alley. My biggest gripe with this game is how many gimmicks characters have. Cooldown, buffs, and debuffs have never been something I like with fighters. Yet I do play Hero in Smash, who has an MP system and random spells. So that might seem weird to say, but I think this game does go too far in making every character unique and have a function in themes. On the other hand, I think Nick also overall had the characters feel too samey. Smash, I feel, is a middle ground. Characters all felt different, but functioned the same, basically, with some exceptions. I will not say this is a bad thing. I just want a character I enjoy, who does damage, and that's it. Which is why I like Jake. Besides his eating move, he's just a stretchy dog, and I love his character, so it's a win-win. I did play Bugs, however, and I like that he has a weaker move if his rocket is on a cooldown, and I think all moves on a cooldown should have a similar feature. The move should not be some great move, just a move so that if you misinput something, something still comes out. Like if Bugs used his pie, then he throws a carrot nub instead, it does a little damage and minor knockback, just something. Now this will be the most controversial part of my video. I do not care for Ultra Instinct Shaggy. I thought the music was funny at first, but I really wanted to just play a Shaggy, and in my opinion, they can still do that. With the character perk system, there were gold perks that were character exclusive because they focused on changing the character slightly. My suggestion would be simple. Make one of Shaggy's perks change his Ultra Instinct charge to something more in line with Shaggy from the show. With that one change, I would be super happy. I do realize the meme is part of what inspired them to make the game, but some people just want to play as regular old Shaggy. Next, onto the graphics. The stages look very nice, vibrant, and mesh 2D and 3D very well. I am curious, as I am not a competitive Smash player, how the stages will be handled. Will they ban some? Will the devs have to remove some stages from ranked in the full release due to un unbalanced uh, issues? I don't know. Which is why I don't have a stage critique section. The characters all look really good, and they picked a nice art style to make all the characters mesh well. And I've been taking feedback and even improving some characters. I do want to see some comic costumes for these characters personally. The only character I think looks bad is Velma. Not that her model is bad, just that she doesn't look like Velma. When compared to Shaggy, they look like they come from two different IPs. It's mostly due to her face and classes not matching classic Velma. Hopefully they change that or give classic Velma as a costume. Other than that, all around great design. Now to talk about the battle pass and free to play aspects of the game. I'm of the mindset that free to play is bad, and so far nothing has changed my mind on that. It is great to get a huge influx of players, but hear me out. Most free to play games, once the servers are down, that's it. No more access to any of the content. Some devs, like the Rising Thunder devs, released the source code of the game so people who liked it could keep playing, which is very cool. I don't think WB would do that. I'm not saying the game will die in a year, but let's say hypothetically this is the best platform fighter and has a huge tournament scene, but it makes no money, so WB pulls the plug. That's it then, game is dead. Which is I am which is why I'm firmly against free to play. Unless the developers keep all content on your side of the server, not theirs. So I will wait and see what they do when it comes to that in the full release. If I am locked out of things due to not being connected to the internet, beyond things that obviously need the internet like online play, dailies, battle passes, it will just confirm my reading of why I hate free-to-play games. Next is the battle pass. The only game I think did them right are Halo MCC and Halo Infinite. Both let me do any previous battle pass whenever I want. I'm not going home after work to grind. I can do it whenever I feel like. The battle pass in this alpha took me around 18 hours, doing the dailies every day and all seasonal milestones. Which sounds great, not even a full day, but two things. One, we do not know how the first real battle pass will be. Two, I'm not working at the moment. After working 8 hours, taking mass transit, showering, eating dinner, I'm exhausted. Sometimes I just want to watch TV. I could have never completed even the Alpha's battle pass if I was working. I feel others are in the same boat. They don't want to spend hours grinding every night just to get a skin for their favorite character. However, I understand the artificial scarcity keeps players' numbers up and gives the publishers money from people buying the premium battle pass. However, this is a fighting game, so 
so people will be coming back with them when a new fighter is added, new stages are added, new items are added. So you have to give it a time limit. Just make it so the free battle pass is locked to that time frame. But if you buy the premium one, you can do it whenever you like. But you have to buy it during that time period. Keeping the scarcity, but removing the grind, that thing that burns a lot of players out who have jobs. On a lighter note, well, let's talk about what I want to see in the game. Mostly characters. I'm skipping some characters I want due to the vast majority also asking for them, unless I really want them. So here are my 10 picks. First up is Mike Tyson from Mike Tyson's Mysteries. I would love to see him doing some of his classic boxing moves and having him interact with other characters, especially Superman, due to him fighting Muhammad Ali. My next number two is Alan from The Hangover. Zach Alfnack is just a funny guy, and The Hangover was a huge success for WB. It would be interesting to see what the devs can come up with for his move set. My third choice. would be Beetlejuice from Beetlejuice. <laughs> I love Beetlejuice and I would love to see him get it in with an alt base on the cartoon and I would love to see what kind of zany stages they could give him. Next up is I'm trying to make sure also that uh, you can see the punishes. They're not the best, but still, maybe could help you. Audrey from uh, Little Shop Wars. Well, Audrey 2 to be exact. If you knew me, you would know I'm a huge fan of Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, watching the off-Broadway play, watching the movie, watching the original movie as well with Jack Nicholson. Next up is one of my favorite shows from a kid, when I was a kid on WB, uh, Mucha Lucha. Now, I'm not sure if they have the rights to it. I think it was a WB cartoon, so I think they might have it. It would be great to see it uh, get in the game. Next up is one of the characters I think a lot of people also suggest, but I like him so much I have to put him on my list. Johnny Bravo. He is one of my uh, all-time favorite uh, cartoon characters, and I think he's just hilarious, and I would love to see him uh, with all the characters and, and interacting with them. Next up is an interesting one I thought of because I was looking up WB properties. I think it'd be very interesting to see them uh, include Magic Mike from the hit movie Magic Mike in the game. We have Game of Thrones, so I think it would be fun to see them come up with a moveset for a stripper. Next up is one of my favorite cartoons from a kid as well, but more just for the memes than um, really because I like the show itself. Captain Planet. I just want to mean I think it'd be fun. Fun to say the plant power is yours. I just really would like to see him in the game. I see a lot of people suggesting um. A certain George Miller IP that he created, and I agree, but I don't want that IP. I want Mumbles from Happy Feet. I just think, you know, everyone wants Mad Max, why not Mumbles? I just think it'd be interesting if they announce, I uh, have a trailer where uh, they say the hit George Miller sh movie uh, character coming to multiverses, and it'd just be. Everyone thinks it's Mad Max and it just comes out to be Happy Feet. Next one, there's actually two characters because I can't decide um, which one would actually get in. Because uh, I wanted to include an, a deep cut for uh, WB, but the problem is their first movie was um, based off a book. Uh, James W. Gerard from WB's first film, My Four Years in Germany. 
could be interesting choice, but it might be impossible. So my second choice is Captain Valo from The Crimson Pirate. When researching that movie, it stuck out to me, and it would be uh, still be the oldest weapon of fighting game ever, besides games using historical figures. It would be kind of cool to see one of those two get in the game, just because it's an old, they're old WB properties. Other than that, I think that's everything I want to discuss with this game, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and whether or not you agree with me, that's fine. I don't even agree with me in certain parts sometimes now that I'm thinking about it, but I hope you um, liked it, and I hope maybe the background video footage helped you get better at the game. So, thank you for watching. Bye!